people will cover their own ass to make some meth. The shift of YouTube. Well, this looks good. I feel like King Julian. That is the sweat box, I'm gonna assume. All right, that was hell. Hello, Sausages Maximus. We've got lots going on today, actually. It is the day after Thanksgiving, which means Thanksgiving was yesterday. Didn't see that one coming, did you? A <laughs> uh, couple of big things going on today. So we've got a video to plan with this kind of cool drone. We have the in-home sauna to use today, which is also going to be part of a series. And I wanted to think a bit deeper about the end of Mr. Beast on YouTube and what YouTube, I think, and other people seem to think is going to look like going forward. Since I've been doing it for like 40 something days now, I think I'm in a pretty good position to share my thoughts on it. All right, so I think first thing is one of the things that happened off camera that is really important to me. And I don't think we, you know, if you're outside the content world, you may not even think once about it. So when brands want to partner with you, they see that you can offer a level of value, right? Like you have an audience or you make videos a certain way, um, you reach that specific type of audience, whatever that is. And when they, when you negotiate a sum of money, you're essentially saying, I can offer you this level of value. And they're saying, okay, I agree to this level of value. And there has to be a fair trade there. But you'll quite often see, and I, I see it all the time, this money is being transferred from these companies to these creators. And the content that's being created just does not perform. And like in, in circumstances where I know the dollar value and I know the views that something has gotten, like I can get a good idea of, of the value exchange and it's way off. The brand has just, has just wasted a ton of money. And I really don't feel that, that, is, that that's right. I mean, part of you could say, yeah, but these, these companies had loads of money. They, like, it's fine. I don't believe that's the case. I don't think like that's fair. So I'll, I'll give you a real life example. The video I did with Panasonic, we rushed it. They paid more to rush it. And I posted it yesterday or the day before. And it hasn't done anywhere near as well as my videos normally do. And therefore, the, the value exchange is just not fair for them. Now I'm, uh, this goes twofold, right? So first thing is, someone asked me this yesterday, weirdly. If, what do I, how do I feel? What do I think if a video doesn't perform well? And now I, I think, yeah, it sucks. I, on one hand, of course, but the other part of me, and I think this is the bigger part of me thinks I'm frustrated and I'm, it's sad knowing that I created something that people didn't enjoy. Because that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to create something that people enjoy watching. And when I put something out there that someone didn't enjoy, it's a shame and I feel bad that I've wasted their time. So there's one side of it, but equally, this video for Panasonic didn't perform well. There is no fair value exchange. So I emailed the agency guy who is in touch with Panasonic and I expressed that it hasn't performed well and I'm waiting on what we call retention metrics to come through. So those normally come through about 24 hours after the video goes live. And that shows me where are the drop offs in the video that have stopped it from performing well. Now, actually, sorry. So I sent this email to the guy and I said, I'll update you again once these metrics come through and, you know, see what I think the next move is and we can go from there. So then he said, like, thank you very much. About an hour later, these metrics come through and honestly, they're not, then they don't relate to how bad the video did. Like, I think it's been up almost 48 hours now and it's only about 12,000 views. Bearing in mind, I have about 500, just under short of 550,000 followers on TikTok. And so, yeah, I feel like I've conned the company. I feel like I've created something that people aren't enjoying. So I sent the metrics through and I said, look, I, I would really like to 
adjust the video, make some changes where I see these drop-offs, and I'd like you to review it, and I'd like to repost in place of the one that's already up. Now, I know some people will say, oh, that's, that's, that's bad, you're just reposting content. I don't really, I mean, I can see how people see it like that, but I don't see it like that. I see it as I'm trying to create something for people to enjoy, and if I can adapt it so that more people, so that people can enjoy it, that's not to me a repost. I'm not doing it for the views or the likes or the follows. I'm doing it because I want people to enjoy the content and I want, I'm doing it because I want that fair value exchange for the brand. Anyway, um, he said, the guy at the agency said, um, Actually, I don't think he had a chance to reply before I'd already gone and made some changes to the edit. And I sent the link over to him and I said, please, like, have a chat with the Panasonic team. Um, if they can okay the video and okay me to repost in place of the one that's gone up, please let me know. And he uh, you know, said, yep, sure, I'll ask the Panasonic team. Thank you for doing this. Didn't get a response because it's Thanksgiving and I guess that Panasonic team are US based as well. Bearing in mind the agency is Canadian based. So I then replied saying, okay, if we are having till tomorrow, can I, I would like to reshoot some small sections at the front of the video that I think would be better for the viewing experience and I'll send you a link later. Bearing in mind that I'm not at home, I'm like three hours away. So his reply was along the lines of, uh, like, really appreciate that. You're a real one. <laughs> oh, that feels good. Um, yeah, that sounds great. Send me the link whenever you have it ready. So we got home at like seven or eight last night. So after we put Rudy to bed, went downstairs, shot some things that I needed to, got the video done and sent it off to him. Now, in this circumstance, I could just wait until this morning. Like no one's gonna be up and looking at emails at this time in the morning, like I'm getting home at 7.30. But I also want to show the priority that I place on this value exchange and making sure that the video performs well for them. So I sent that off last night. <laughs> Annoyingly, he, the guy didn't reply. It was late, so I don't expect a reply. But I would like, you know, for that to have been relayed to Panasonic that night for them to see the level of urgency. But just hopeful that this agency guy can share that information um, and share that I've wanted to redo the video because I don't think it's doing well. I, I had this thought last night. It'd be really shitty if he were to pass on to the agency. I've asked Oliver to reshoot it and redo it because I'm not happy with where things are. You know, it makes him look like the good guy. You can't, not, you know, nothing against this dude. But, what? Rookie at the window. <laughs> but you just can't trust people these days. I've been in corporate America long enough to know that people will cover their own ass and make themselves look better before being honest, which sucks. So yeah, made those changes. Hopefully we get the okay and I can post again today, but let's take a little bit of time and discuss my, ex discussed, discuss my experience in daily vlogging, the things I've tried, things that have worked, haven't worked. I think it'll be interesting. All right, let's see you inside. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why, don't know. I know this isn't ideal. It's currently Monday and I'm referencing, this is, should be in the video that I filmed on Friday, but I got caught up with things. And so I'm just gonna explain my thoughts on the shift of YouTube and where I think it's going away from that Mr. Beast type of era. Um, so I think let's, like, where did YouTube start? It, you, it just started with people turning on a camera and just talking to the camera. There was no I'm looking to grow, I'm looking to make money. It was just people who made videos for the enjoyment of making videos. Or they wanted to document their process for something. 
there was no this will be I'll be making hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars in the next few years whereas that's what it is now it's people chasing being on social media because of that am I any different no but I truly love the video making process and I, I found this is kind of a, a slight side quest <laughs> I found that I've really enjoyed documenting my thoughts as I work through things like it's been a good way for me to think like none of my friends outside of the ones I've made from making content are into social media at all aside from just watching it so I don't really have anyone to talk to my wife's not really into it she's good to talk to to bounce things off of because off of because she's completely outside of this realm but if we think about where YouTube progressed to, it progressed to a place of, no, sorry, slowly progressed to a place of, I need to make the best video possible, I need to make the best thumbnail, the best title, I need to make sure there's no dead space in the video, let's cut out all pauses, um, the video needs to be completely scripted to optimize it for someone's viewing experience. When you know, when all of that happens, you move away from the authenticity of making a video because you loved making it. For the most part. And so where do I, why do I see it coming back to that? Well, number one, you look at the top of YouTube and it's Mr. Beast and a few others and everything is scripted down to a T. The budgets are huge and people just can't compete against that. So then with the rise of TikTok and Gen Z on TikTok, you see that more and more of the bigger creators, there's no fancy editing. It's just they've picked up a camera, picked up their phone, and just talking. Like look, let's look at Keith Lee on TikTok. Let's look at what seems like Ryan Trahan on YouTube, but I know there's a lot that goes into the planning and the script writing process there. Who else on TikTok? I mean so many others like why can't i think of anyone else right now but tons of them are just they pick up the camera and they just talk and people now oh, i guess you have sam Sulek on youtube change the game you can see in everything he's doing bloody hell it's hot you can see in everything he's doing that it's it seems like none of it is for growth everything is for growth because he's just a man that's just flipping huge but in terms of like youtube or social media growth it doesn't seem like any of it's for that and i was looking through the comments and trying to understand why do people love what he's doing so much if you don't know who he is he films himself in the car in the morning going to the gym or in the afternoon whatever it is going to the gym talks about what he's going to eat what session he's going to do has his workout talks through his workout and then goes home and eats. I've seen a couple of his videos and I think that's pretty much it. The thumbnails are not edited thumbnails, they're just a screenshot from his videos. Now why do his thumbnails do so well? Because he's a flipping monster and he is the reason why people would click. Like you see him in the thumbnail and you think, jinkies, look at the size of this guy. And then you go over and click. But I was looking through his comments and trying to figure out what is it that people really like about what he's doing. And they love the fact that there's no editing, there's no music, it's just raw, it's authentic, there's no added bravado, it's just raw. And then I started trying to figure out, well, who the hell has one to two hours to watch a video like this? Which then you go down the rabbit hole and you see that people aren't sitting down and watching it for 10 minutes of entertainment. They're putting it on as like background noise. They're watching it as they eat their dinner, as they work out, as they get ready for the gym, as they drive to the gym, as they drive to work. And it's something that people put on in the background. But it all relates back to this whole authenticity thing that we've been in this time where things are just not authentic. Things are made up for the ultimate entertainment, which nothing wrong with that. But it lacks that authenticity. It lacks that realness. And I think people are starting to see that actually they want that realness. They want that raw authenticity. 
And how do you get that? And you get that by just turning the camera on and talking, by including the pauses, by talking through what you're thinking. Well, this, this is my interpretation of how you get to that authenticity. You talk through what you're thinking, how you're doing it. Um, you keep the parts in that you would normally edit out. And I think it's all, you know, one of the mo the biggest challenges I've had in doing this is thinking I should cut out all the pauses because that's a waste of time for people. No one wants to see those pauses. But those pauses are what make it so much more real. That's what helps people feel more involved. They start to see that actually things, I'm not missing out on things. I'm seeing everything that I could see in this clip. And there's no music to try and make the scene or something look better or feel better. And so it's like you're watching a live stream, which is, I think, the growth of live streaming is another thing, is another reason why I see this kind of like raw vlogging as a gosh, spitting out boiling water. Is another thing I see as to why people want that authenticity. Because on a live stream, you can't you can't cut out the pauses. It's everything there. Now, when I think of doing a, a video of my learnings, I think some of the biggest learnings are realizing that you... How do you reach the bare minimum while the goal is to also grow? So I started to just... I don't know if the right term is relinquish. Just give up on the idea of trying to grow, like with these videos. And it's more a case of, I've actually found the benefit is me talking out loud and hearing myself think and being able to think differently. And then watching it back in the morning is quite an introspective thing to be able to see what I said, how I was thinking when I'm in a different mood and analyze that and see was I right was I wrong why did I think like that what was I doing differently you know I'd say one of the massive huge benefits that only took me about 20 minutes that I got out of this was maybe a week ago now I was just I was feeling down I don't know why because everything everything was so good and so I did this exercise where I put Everything that was going well, I just listed out everything I had going on in my life. The things that were going well, the things that were going bad. Why were they going well? Why were they not going well? And then my approach to life is, if I can control it, I'll do something to control it. If not, I don't worry about it. I find out what can I control around that to be able to change that from a bad to a good. And after that 20-minute exercise, number one, I felt so much better for getting it all out. But I also had an action plan for how I was going to make these things better, for how I was going to get them from bad to good. You know, in corporate America, you'd call it how to get it from red to green. So yeah, giving up on the growth aspect has really been a nice, it's a nice feeling to know that you're not you're doing something for the fun of it instead of chasing a goal that you really don't have that much control over. Like in a sense you do because you could start making better thumbnails, you could start making better titles and making the content better, but that isn't the goal. The goal is just to be raw, it's just to record the things that you're doing. Again, like this is me thinking out loud and it might feel like I'm talking to you. But actually, I'm kind of just thinking out loud. Yeah, I think there's going to be a massive shift on YouTube. Now, there will be a, a spot for the Mists of Beast type stuff. But I think... Yeah, there's going to be a massive increase, a massive growth of people who just pick up a camera and talk. Who you can see are being real. It's one of the other things... I see a lot of comments now on TikTok on my videos that are just the word real. 
And of course, being millennial, I had to figure out what that was. <laughs> and it turns out that, be, that when someone comments that, it's, this is authentic. This is just real. Which is quite nice to see. Which is also weird because my TikTok videos aren't just real. I don't know. I don't understand that. Either way, um, here's the rest of the video. Remember, this is from Friday, so... Yeah, and then as you catch up on a few days, you'll see what is going on here. Yeah. You crooked spanner. I don't know what that was, sorry. Um, I'm setting up the sauna right now. Not really sure. I hope this is going to get really hot. I did, this came with it. I guess that's like a floor mat. I don't really know. So, floor. The fumigating machine. I'm pretty sure I saw this in Breaking Bad. When they, you know, fumigated a house to make some meth. I have yet to read the instructions. Just turn it up or down? Down, there we go. All right. Look, this is the good part. Like, you know that it's sauna because it says sauna. That's good. All right, we went to get a Tristan. A Christmas tree, a Christmas tree this morning, and I, um, as I was waiting for the guy who was going to cut the end off the Christmas tree, yeah, we do uh, real trees, which not exactly sure how I feel about doing a real tree. On one part, it's a nice experience, like since we have the little man, it's a nice experience for him. He's probably not going to remember it at this age, though, is he? But real like sorry fake trees are so bloody expensive that it's going to take you like three to five years to pay off a fake tree with the cost of a uh real tree like i think we paid 65. anyway that wasn't the point i was making The point I was making is that this guy, as he's, what the hell? The whole bloody bottom comes off. I guess number one, this is ripped, so that's good. Um, the zipper is both, is in the middle where it's closed on both sides, so I don't really know what to do there. What is going on? Where does the structure go? Just inside and you put this over the top? Maybe that's, yeah. I mean, adjust this then. I can tell you the story that I started on. All right, this story that you've been eagerly waiting for. Asking the guy to cut the um, tree off for me and two guys I wouldn't say cut in front, but they just, it's like they didn't acknowledge him as a person. It's, they just say the thing that they're looking for 
and expect him to know what they want and where it is. Now, uh, hang on, let me get some cough medicine for Rugi. All right, yeah, so it's like people forget that the person working at a, sh a store is actually a real person. Right? And like just demanding something because they work there and you expect them to know where the thing you want is. I think that is something about America that I'm, that I still find super rude. Like the way that Americans order, I don't find rude. I think that's just, that's just how people order here. And maybe, you know, that's just how people ask for help in stores. But I did see an American doing a TikTok the other day and it was, talking about how weird it is that people just come up and demand something or like expect you to know exactly what it is they're looking for. Which I guess if you work in a store, maybe you should know, but you still they like, talk to that person as if, hey, sorry to interrupt you. Can you help me find whatever it is? Maybe I'm the silly one. I also found someone's phone in Walmart this morning when I went to go get the hoverboard for another video. And I don't know if it's just me, but when I took it back to the front desk, I don't know if I, I feel like I expected the person behind the desk to be like, oh, that's very kind of you, thank you. But that's so stupid, because that's just like the expected thing to do is to give it back. Does that need three? That doesn't seem very tall, does it? Oh, I guess it's not to stand in, it's to sit in. It's funny how, like, you would say the British and American are so similar in many ways, yet the culture is so different. Okie dokie. So I've been working on a chat GPT script to help me write videos because I could easily make a video a day, easily. And I have so many ideas to make a video a day. I could also do with the revenue of making a video a day. And the strength of anything, because I don't have any. But the thing that holds me back is the like typing out the scripts. I love the script writing process, but because it's like, let's say how you would consider a movie to be written, there's lots of parts to it that, that need to connect. And instead of me trying to figure it out every day, like I, ju I just don't have the creative juices in me to be able to do that each day, every day. But if like I have my formula, I have my algorithm for creating a story, especially the one that goes on TikTok. And if I can make chat GP, if I can write out a script that chat GPT can use to create a story exactly how I would think about writing a story. It's like coming from a software engineering background, you understand that all programs are just its parameter or ver sorry variable. Not what am I saying? Oh my gosh! You have functions that take in parameters, but within those, where how do I explain this in the best way possible? You have your logic, but then you have the variables that are used in that logic. So in this case, like the logic is the way the story works, the way the story is written. But the variables that go into that are the things that happen within that story or like the type of story. So if you can write a script that just takes in different variables each time, I don't even know if I'm using variables and parameters right, it's been so long. 
So if I create a script that I pass in like for this video, for example, I've done a hybrid because the script isn't ready, but it's, I've given it how I want the story to generally go and I've told it what style I want it written in and the topic of the video. And then it's just written me a full script that was actually really good. It wasn't perfect for what I wanted, but over time I'll adjust it to get it to be perfect. But it allowed me to write a whole script for this video in less than 20 minutes versus the hour plus that it takes me. Well, this looks good. Hell yeah, dude, look at this seat. I feel like King Julian. Either something snapped or I farted. <laughs> it's not funny, is it? Yeah, look at that. Flipping don't have kids, all right? Because they rip the ears off of your shrocks. Look at that disgusting behavior. I love, I, I would, it's hard to see life now without having a child. You know, like you see or you hear parents saying, oh, life is amazing with a child. And you kind of, before you have kids, you look at it and you think, oh gosh, here we go again. You kind of have to say that because you already have the kid. But no, like it's so, it's so cool watching them do things, watching them learn. I saw an interview recently. Who's the guy that played Nick in New Girl? Whatever his name is. He was saying that he was invited to an event and his first question was, are like, are kids allowed? And the response was no. And he's like, well, then I'm not interested. Cause like all you want to do is do the things with your kids. Cause like that is now part of your experience. That's now part of the fun. That doesn't look like you're going to fit. These aren't, th are these different lengths? They can't be, there's no way I just got them all right. Because that doesn't fit across the base. Oh, it stretches. Here we now, we're cooking on gas. Oh gosh. What the fuck is this thing? It, it's like... Oh. It's just you being a hillbilly, Oliver. Is it just you being a hillbilly? Oh, it just needs to be taught. In what world does someone decide that this was a good idea for a product? <laughs> Do 
Can I do an Amazon refund where they just disassemble it at my house? This doesn't look like it will fit. Oh shit. You can't tell me that this frame is meant to fit. Stretchy. Yeah, but the whole creating a GPT thing, there's a part of me that thinks, well, that takes the fun out of the whole process. That makes it like you're just automating it with AI. But I don't, I actually, I don't think that's the case. Oh, hang on, I need to take my top off. Might be nice if you can hear. <laughs> or not. I thought we were making moves there. What? Bro, no way in hell. Hello and welcome to today's video where you watch an idiot try to assemble an at-home sauna. This does not have the stretch that it seems to suggest that it has. That was the stitching. I should have looked at reviews of these because surely the reviews are going to say that these just don't, these aren't good.
Come on. Mate, this is so tight. I'm afraid to let go in case it just like pings backwards. Like, where's this come from? Today on shit I bought from China. <laughs> what if I... Do this. Oh, you silly willy. And then I take this one out. Yeah, but that's going to be so hard to get back in, isn't it? Or do I try it? No, I, no, I shouldn't try that. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you nuns. That's that broken. Don't understand. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the stitching all gone. I don't want to be rude because there's probably some child in China that's made this and he's quite proud of his work. And I've just destroyed it just trying to set it up. Come on, can you get around the corner? You have. Okay, there was a, a, a large part of me that thought, you know, I'll just record the setup process. It'd be nice and easy. We can have a chat while I'm doing it. No. Like that doesn't even fit together at the bottom. I don't know what to tell you. Other than don't buy this, I don't know what to tell you.
even with an extra inch or two from the stitching that's been destroyed, still not sure where this is able to fit together. Look how I meant to pull that together. It's like, it's the best way to explain this. Well, number one, it's like it wasn't designed to actually fit. Number two, it's like it was designed, the, the pole lengths were designed, but forgot about how they connect together, which takes up a lot of additional room. That's good. It might fit now. Nope. I'm gonna have to crawl in, aren't I? Do I just break all corners? Like that one's already broken. They've all broken. In the time it's taken to bloody set this up, I could have earned enough money to buy a proper one and have someone install it. OK, 
Okay, there we go. Looks good. We've only got two, three, two, three broken pieces. This one's still good, so that's a positive. I mean, this one's just completely said, see you later. Get my chair in. Look at that. Ooh. All right, user manual. Intelligent fumigation machine. But, excuse me. All right. What is all this? What's that? And what are you? I get the idea that I'm just... There's literally... There's no... There's nothing for any of the other stuff. Like, what's this for? What's that for? What is that for? Okay, here's the instructions, ready? After completing the steps of adding water and connecting the sweat box, it can be powered on for use. That is the sweat box, I'm gonna assume. The sweat box. <laughs> All right, let's get some water in here. Right, where do I connect it? Oh, at the back here. That's not ideal.
It's not the longest pipe I've ever seen. That's what we've got. We haven't got much to work with. Right, let's give it a go. On. It says it says 459. I'm not really sure what that is. All right, the numbers we have, I'll just show you because this is, this is weird. All right, what we're working with. It seems like this side changes the heating level, this side changes the timer. So it looks like we have from zero to nine on the heating level. Let's start at five. And then on timer, it goes as high as 95. Is that minutes? Is that, that must be minutes? And why isn't it generating steam? Or is it? Oh, it's warmer in there. The water isn't, but it's warm in there. I should get hot water in there, shouldn't I, to hurry it up? Yeah. All right. Hot water. Seems a lot toastier. Okay, on. And we're plugged in. Okay, I guess, I guess, just wait. I'll get the camera, the other camera set up, so yeah. That looks good, doesn't it? Oh wait, this must be to go inside or outside. Yeah? That has to be right. This is 
like a the seal. Okay. Let me get in my box. Oh shit. Okay. Alright, so it's not hot enough for the steam yet, but it looks like it's functioning. I don't know how good it's going to function. Dude. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so now when we sell the home, we say the home includes in-home sauna. Yeah, all right, I'll see you in however long. Could be five minutes, could be... Oh, it's snowing. Not very hard, but it's snowing. Oh. That's quite nice. Oh, that's perfect, because on, like... It's like a flipping kettle. I don't know if you can hear it. It literally sounds like a kettle. But on day three of doing this, I'm gonna do it outside. Cause like I want the nice cool air after coming out of here. And that's the day I'm gonna use the, do it for the sponsored post of using the portable power station. And if there's snow on the ground, that would be amazing. That would be so good, oh. All right, see you in a bit. I bought a little thermometer earlier. About 80. Hey Siri, how hot should a sauna be? Between 150 and 195. So I guess we've got a little bit to go, which this doesn't go up past 120. So that's, that's not perfect. <laughs> I guess when it goes over 120. Right, okay. I've got some lights to put in. I've got my camera here. I'd say we're getting there. I think this camera should go at this angle. I think the best bit here is the fact that I'm filming from outside, but you can't see anything on the inside just because of the fog. 
But I guess that kind of makes it kind of funny, doesn't it? All right, well, camera's set up, so we're just waiting. All right. Shall I go in, Duda? I think I need to move this back. Yeah, I'm not too sure how I... Yeah, I'm not too sure about this either, Duda. <laughs> Oops. Ready for this? Um, I guess I'm just going to switch to the camera inside for audio. So that's enough of enough of you. Sorry. Put you there. All right, dude, are you ready? All right, that was hell. I think tomorrow I try taking in my ice water and see if it's more bearable. Oh. Oh, right, tomorrow I'll bring in my ice water. Right, tomorrow I'll bring in my ice water and see if that helps make it more bearable. I do that. Yes, Ruga? Yes, Ruga? Yes, Ruka? Yes, Ruka? I'm coming up in a second, Rooks. What do you think, Duda? Dude, there being snow is so good for the next part of this. So good. But we're about to go and get food, so let's go and get food and I'll edit this maybe tomorrow. Ruga didn't nap today, no chance. All right, see ya. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.